Okay. Can you see the slides? Yes, we can see the slide. Great. Uh, if someone can confirm, John or Joel, uh, that the YouTube is working fine. Okay, we are live. Great, let me hide the screen for the Zoom and we can start. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So this is the second lecture in PNS, Project and Seminars, Mobile Genomics. So for today, we will talk about the course logistics and introduction to the topic. We already assigned the projects to all the students in the past uh, two weeks. And we also give an introductory lecture on genomics, uh, starting from sequencing, how we sequence a, a genomic sample, all the way to uh, variant calling. And we cover multiple topics, including motivation, to why we need to accelerate it and not only accelerate genomic analyses, but also uh, respect some constraints such as memory footprint, energy consumption, or the design constraints such as size, um, uh, power, and so on. And um, I already introduced myself, but I'm Mohamed Alser. I'm lecturer, senior researcher at Safari Research Group since uh, almost four, four years. I got my PhD from Bill Kent University and my PhD thesis received the IEEE uh, Turkey Doctoral Dissertation Award in 2018. And um, I mainly focus in my research around bioinformatics, computational genomics, and metagenomics. I especially excited about building new data structure, algorithms, and architecture so that we improve genomic analyses, starting from the way we handle the data, building the algorithms, all the way to build efficient architecture that execute the algorithm. All right, so if you are curious about knowing more on genomic analyses or how genomic analyses correlate with computer architecture or computer scientists, so I would recommend everyone to watch this three hour lectures. Uh, hopefully it's comprehensive enough to motivate you working on this area. And we define intelligent genome analysis in that lecture as follows, as you can see in the slide. So when we talk about intelligent genomic analyses, we don't mean only fast analyses, but also we should talk about scalability. And I always give this example. If you finish one analysis in five minutes, let's say, how many minutes or how many hours, how many days do you need to complete a thousand analyses or million analyses and so on? Would it still take the same time or you would like to multiply the number of analyses by the number of seconds that you can achieve one analysis? And this is very important for places such as hospital where um, you are dealing with life-threatening disease or critical situations that you need to take action right on time. But also there are a lot of constraints such as energy efficiencies. There are uh, some situation where you are trying to do the analyses in outer space, for example, where you are limited by size. So the space shuttles are always uh, uh, have a lot of constraints, especially about energy efficiencies and about the size. So you cannot hold a very huge sequencer to the space so that you can do the analyses on time rather than uh, waiting until the shuttle go back to the earth, which may cause some contamination to the sample or you may lose the samples and so on. But also we are talking about portability here on earth, right? So there are some places on earth we do, where we don't have access to the internet or to the capable clusters. And we already witnessed this a few years back when Ebola hit Africa. So in most of the places over there, it's re really remote locations. So you don't have access to the internet. You cannot access clusters such as those provided by Amazon or uh, Illumina itself to do the analyses over there. So you wanna do everything on site in the same location. You wanna collect the sample and start doing the analysis. So we already motivated and talk a lot about uh, stories to motivate why we need genomic analyses to be intelligent and why we need it um, more than ever before. So this is the right time to start doing something around this area. And actually uh, many government or governmental initiatives started with the COVID-19 hitting the entire uh, earth 
So they already start to do more analyses, more efficient analyses that are truly population scale. So they target, for example, the entire population of the city or the entire uh, sewage system of cities such that they can anal uh, analyze um, the things that correlate with COVID-19 or study how COVID-19 transmit from one place, from one zip code to another zip code and so on. So as a reading, we already assigned this paper to all students of this course, but I would recommend all people watching us online on YouTube to also read this paper, which kind of envision it as a comprehensive on covering different aspects of making uh, genomic analyses more intelligent. This is the fifth time that we are offering this course uh, since fall 2020, and hopefully the students are enjoying it. We receive a positive feedback from the students after they complete the semester project. And also some of the projects were really successful, such as leading to a publication where the students are involved as a co-author in these works. And we are growing basically in this semester. So we already got an increase in the number of students by more than 50% as uh, what we got in the previous semesters. So the, hopefully we will continue the same efforts and even we improve the course more. And um, we are currently offering two PNS courses around genomics, one of them focusing on developing algorithms and uh, improving existing tools, studying the existing tools, studying the bottlenecks, performance bottlenecks in existing tools and how we can address them basically. The other course uh, focusing on accelerating existing algorithms or new algorithms that we are proposing in our group using efficient hardware accelerators. It could be FPGA, GPUs, SIMD, or even uh, emerging technologies that they just exist by some companies, including, for example, NVIDIA H100, uh, which can accelerate uh, sequence alignment or dynamic programming problems, or even including OpMem technologies where they provide DRAM that is capable to do processing uh, near the memory banks, for example. So you can see all the content of the, uh, this course and the previous versions of these courses for the last a few semesters, all publicly available online without uh, any restriction on the access. So you can access the website as I'm providing in the link here. Um, you can see also the slides that I'm um, lecturing today. So you already can access the slides in PDF and PowerPoint, and that is hopefully helpful for you to uh, follow up with whatever we're providing in these courses. And the content will be based uh, basically on a week basis. So every week we are going to provide new lecture as I'm going to provide more details in the following slides. And you can see here the title of the lecture and where you can access the, the, um, the lecture content plus the video. So you can watch the video live or you can watch it on your own later on, which still will be available on YouTube. And again, this is the link to the course page to follow up with us. And now I'm moving to the logistics and your responsibilities as a student in this course. So feel free to stop me, ask me questions. If there are also questions on YouTube, so maybe someone can uh, transfer it to me here on Zoom. All right. Okay, so let's move on. So what is the role of this course? Basically, we are aiming to cover the basics of genome analysis to understand the speed and the accuracy trade-off in using computationally lightweight heuristics. So the heuristics that we are proposing normally, they don't solve the problem optimally, but they're trying to achieve some optimal results in few cases while exploiting or providing high performance. So they provide speed up in most of the cases or in some of the cases that we are focusing on, but without providing false negative. And by false negative, we mean we don't, um, we don't provide wrong results in a sense that we eliminate correct results. So we never do that. And if we do that, then of course, it depends on the application you are targeting or the case by case that you are doing. But normally we are trying to focus on uh, optimizing the algorithm, such as either we accelerate the algorithm without changing the computation, 
or we change the computation such that we provide heuristic solution, which is near optimal, let's say, but we can exploit some benefits in most of the cases. And um, um, we don't require in this course to have a knowledge in genome analysis or bioinformatics or biology and so on. So we already capable and we are equipped with the uh, efficient knowledge that we need to transfer to you so that you can carry out your project successfully. Um, I'm going to talk about the requirement in the next slide. So students in this course hopefully will experimentally evaluate different heuristic algorithms and observe their effect on the end results. So there are a few projects that we already assigned to the student based on their expertise and skills. And in these projects, we aim most of the time to accelerate an existing pipeline. So we have a complete pipeline or a few steps of the pipeline, and we aim to accelerate them by changing the algorithm itself. So either we are proposing a new algorithm, we give it to the student, the student going to evaluate it. And so some drawbacks, some limitation that we need to solve. So we address the, these limitation together with the student or the student can propose new things, new approaches to address the same problem, but using more efficient either implementation or more efficient algorithm basically. And at the end of the, 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 the project, we're going to evaluate on real data and um, hopefully that can lead to a publication. So basically we assign to the student real research-based project rather than just give them something already have been done in the past. So that will, it's a win-win situation basically because most of these projects are already project of PhD student in our group or a master uh, student in our group and the student will be, um, um, will be um, experiencing the real situation, how a researcher will deal with the real problem, how would analyze the real problem, then proposing something new. And that is really challenging since you cannot get help from internet most of the time since the algorithm is new, but at least you can get help from the researcher in our group. And we have quite a large team to help the students in this situation. Hopefully the evaluation at the end of the project will give the student the chance to carry out a hands-on project to implement one or more of these heuristics in their smartphones, for example, or any kind of portable devices. And here we are focusing on portability since it's very important. And rather than using general purpose computers to do the analysis, so we want to have dedicated uh, computing systems. So either we have a small FPGA or small GPU um, system or chip, that can do the analysis or even just exploiting smartphones and uh, like portable devices. Hopefully by that, we will help society by enabling on-site analyses of genomic data. This including uh, medical data or hospital data and many more uh, situation and application where we need really portable devices, very efficient algorithms that can be implemented in these devices. So the key objectives of uh, this course are as following. Multiple components that are aimed at improving students' first basic knowledge in genome analysis. Again, as I said, we don't require any knowledge, any previous knowledge in uh, bioinformatics or biology or genomic analysis. We are going to teach you all the required skills in these courses. And this course aim also to provide technical skills since uh, we require you to work uh, um, using the code, for example, and um, the, the implementation or the programming language we require, it's really based on the student skills. And we are very flexible in this. So we have projects that uh, can be done using Python, C, C++, or even CUDA programming or FPGA using Vitus, high-level synthesis tools, or it could be a better log, VHDL, and so on. But in the same way, same time, since we are doing research-based projects, so we are going to enrich the critical thinking and the analysis at the student side. For example, the student face a problem in um, solving or implementing something, then the first thing we ask the student to do is to search in Google, which is normal, right? So whenever we face any problem ourselves, directly we go to the Google or any of those uh, forums 
to find the solution first and try this and try that, try this and so on. But in the same way, we're going to guide the student. So if it fails at once, we're going to guide the student, either him or she, um, to basically to go in this direction or the, or the other direction, or we assign a similar paper where we know that there should be a solution around these. So we're going to give more papers to read, more things to analyze, and we're going to give suggestions and trying this method, try the other way, try this way and so on. And with that, hopefully the student will get familiar with key research directions and see how um, the, what are the critical problems, what are the things trendy currently in the research area that we are targeting in each project. And by the way, this project is really um, a diverse project. So they could target totally different steps in the genomic analyses or the, the um, related topics. So they, we are not focusing on one step, for example, read mapping or variant calling or base calling. It could be anything, basically. And we have a large list of projects that we already um, use to assign some of these projects to the student based on their expertise and skills. At the end of the project, we are going to ask each student to give a, a formal presentation um, uh, to the entire group. So we have in Safari Research Group around 30 to 40 members. So we're going to invite all of them to attend these presentations. And uh, that will give you, again, another nice experience such that you mimic the environment that you have in real conferences, because all these researchers are going to ask you questions and uh, uh, inquiry about something in your presentation. If you did well, then you are going to have very active discussion with the audience, and uh, probably that may lead to something in the future. For example, they may contact you saying that you did well in the presentation, let's do a master or project together, let's continue improving the project for PhD, for uh, semester project, for thesis, and so on. All right, so what is the key goal of this course? Basically, we want to teach you so that you learn how to efficiently implement one of the key steps in genome analysis on portable devices. So as I said, in this course, we are focusing on implementing algorithms. Uh, it could be also accelerating the algorithm using efficient optimization techniques, such as reducing time complexity, memory complexity of the algorithm, or finding a new way to solve the same problem using more efficient techniques. And the, the prerequisites, which I already mentioned several times uh, in this lecture, that we don't require any prior knowledge in bioinformatics or genome analysis. So hopefully we made this clear so that you are not scared from dealing with this area. So we already can teach you all the required topics that you need to uh, make your project a successful one. Um, in most of the project, we are working in C, and C programming, hopefully I already motivate you in the previous lecture why we should use C, not Python, not other programming languages when we talk about high performance. And I already give you two examples, uh, comparing different programming languages and doing different functions. Uh, the first one was matrix mul multiplication, and the second one was just reading genomic data. So by just reading the genomic data, you can see a really huge difference from one programming language to another, and that is no computation included over there. However, in some projects, we already have Python as a proof of concept, so we already have a tool in Python and want to try out what if we implement this algorithm but not this way or the original way the algorithm was implemented in. So in this, in this kind of project, it's okay to use Python, for example, because it's still proof of concept. And once it's uh, optimized or providing good results, then we can move on to more dedicated implementations such as AVX, for example, or vectorization. But there are also other applications that are not time critical at this situation. And for those applications, it's okay to use Python if you wish so. But we always prefer C programming at this stage. So hopefully all of you have already interest and curiosity about making things more efficient and solving problems, because this is a very important problem that we are trying to solve here, which can impact everything in our life, including our health, right? So if we improve one application in genome analysis, hopefully that's going to be practically used in real life, and then hopefully it's going to make our lives better. 
And we don't know that. There are a lot of algorithms, a lot of examples or papers that make impact even after some time, five years or 10 years. Some of, some of the algorithms, for example, we have nice experience with this called BITAP and was proposed about 50 years back. And then this algorithm was not used as far as I know in any of the real applications. And we find that algorithm really good candidate for the hardware that we have today. So 50 years back, we don't have such hardware such as processing and memory, real processing and memory, for example. But these days we are trying to have these, or we already have uh, some draft of these technologies these days, including Upmem and Samsung, for example, uh, processing and memory. So for that algorithm, we improve upon and we change it a lot. And we then we propose some, um, some direction to enrich the algorithm with more capabilities. And then we implement it uh, for in-memory processing. And that is the paper called Genasm, where Damla, uh, she's currently an engineer at BioNano, uh, proposed the, the, the work. So I think I have a pointer at the end of the lecture to that work. All right, so I'm a lecturer, I'm the lead lecturer uh, in this course, and we have a nice team of researchers. They are really expert in specific fields, and these specific fields are hopefully going to help you a lot. So we already assign one or more of these mentors to each of the projects, which you already uh, came to know them, hopefully. You already met with them maybe at least twice so far. And if uh, I really recommend you to also learn more about the other mentors. So please check the website at the end here so that you can know the entire Safari Research Group and what are the things that we are work working on and so on. So we have Juan, uh, who's um, expert in processing and memory and GPU programming. We have John Fortuna, who's doing PhD in bioinformatics. He's focusing on proposing new algorithms. Joel as well, uh, doing a PhD in bioinformatics. He joined us uh, a year ago, but he was doing an intern with us before that for almost a year. And he's focusing on both software and hardware acceleration of bioinformatics algorithm. We have Anika also, uh, who's uh, doing uh, work or a PhD in, in processing in memory, processing uh, near storage, processing in storage, and so on. So there are uh, work called GenStore from here. I already presented um, um, some details about this work in my previous lecture, but I'm going to give a pointer to that paper as well. We have Max who's doing masters with us and uh, he has been with us since almost three years. And he's doing research in bioinformatics, uh, especially uh, pre-alignment filtering. And we have Julian who's doing master thesis with us uh, he already uh, completed the thesis and going to present it this week. And he's doing um, uh, more things around using heterogeneous architectures such as GPUs and FPGAs together to accelerate application or important application and genome analysis. We also have Arvid uh, who's doing a master thesis uh, or master research with us. Uh, he was with us uh, in one of the PNS courses and then he decided to join us uh, for doing a semester project. And then uh, he stayed doing research with us for almost a year or two years now. Uh, Yunju joined us recently. She's doing an internship um, with me on the using the FPGA uh, acceleration for seeding algorithms. Um, and uh, we have Luca as well, who's doing master thesis on metagenomic topics, uh, including improving the metagenomics with the new algorithms that has not been used before in this area. So hopefully with that, we cover all the team. Uh, I think they are already with us. Uh, if someone wants to mention something. Uh, okay. Yeah, but I would recommend everyone to go through the website try to know more about their research, about the things they have been doing, they have been done or so far and so on. But they are going also, each of them, hopefully, they will give some lectures, one or more, uh, in, during this course to teach on the things that they are expert in or some different topics that we're going to cover in this course, which is something nice since even if you aren't focusing on one application or one project, it's okay or it's great actually, 
to came to know about other steps in the pipeline so that you can um, get more ideas about how you can extend the things that you're working on in the future. You may move from one step to another step, combine, combine together multiple steps, or even move totally to a different application by informatics. Okay, so what are the course requirements? So attendance is required for all meetings. Hopefully uh, we already made this clear in the past few lectures. Uh, you need to study the learning materials that we already assigned to all of you in the first week. And each student will carry out a hands-on project. And that is the main goal of this course. So we are teaching, we are giving you more knowledge in this course, but we also require you to do a semester long project. And in this project, normally we ask you to build something new, implement some ideas that we have, some draft algorithms, and do coding and design with the close engagement from the mentors. So we have uh, nice mentors, hopefully all of them, they already have good experience in dealing with PNS students. So we ask all the students to exploit that. That is a nice resource for all of you for free, basically. We don't ask you for something in the back or in return, but we are providing a lot of resources for all of you just to pass this course and do nice projects where you can see how real research is. For participation, we always encourage everyone to ask questions, contribute through thoughts, ideas, or even some discussion or things how to improve the course, uh, what are the things that we are missing or things that can be done in a better way. And we, in, in, in the first few weeks, we normally assign papers before we assign projects. So we ask you to read the, these papers, watch videos, watch previous lectures so that you can get some insights about the things that you are doing. But also, we are going to assign a few papers as you move on. So every week um, or every two weeks, we are going to give you a few papers to read so that you are introduced to the next task that you are going to do. And depending, uh, depending on the project that you're handling, uh, this paper could be relevant or it could be uh, far away so that we need to leverage these ideas used somewhere else in a different application in the project that you are doing. And um, at the end of the semester, as I mentioned, you have to prepare a presentation and deliver the code through a GitHub repository. And normally the GitHub repo, we are creating it either in the beginning of the semester so that you can accumulate things over there, or we are going to create at the end of the semester where you can upload the code. But at the end, it should be coming from us. So we should provide you the GitHub repo so that we ensure reproducibility and um, the, 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 the uh, let's say, smooth uh, takeover in the next semester. So a student will, may reuse your code as is and build upon it and try to improve. There, we already have great experience in the previous uh, four to five semesters where we got the excellent projects or students where they have done great progress and we promised them to publish the work along with them. So they are already included as a co-author or in the authorship of the paper. And uh, those who have done great project, normally they continue doing research with us since they already like what they were doing or they find it very useful. Basically. The course website is as follows. It's already on active and we already upload the teaching material over there. So you will see the uh, material that we use in the, the first two lectures. You will see also links to the YouTube videos and the recorded videos and so on. So hopefully you'll find useful information over there, including the uh, learning materials that we assigned in the previous two, or two lectures or few weeks. But we also use GLIP which is rank central, something similar to WhatsApp that we use in our group, group very often to share ideas or discuss or arrange for a meeting and so on, which is something uh, quicker than uh, exchanging emails. But we also use Moodle as usual in all ETH courses. And we use the email. As you have been um, receiving few emails from me in the past few days, so we'll keep using email plus this channel that I mentioned. So please check your GLIP, Moodle, and email frequently for any announcements or updates. 
For project assignments, we already ask you to study the learning materials. So we assign you two required materials to, to study and watch for basically. And there are other three optional learning materials. And we gave you in the past five days to enter your preferences for projects. So we asked you about skills and, and many more things. And then after that, we match your interests, skills, and background with a suitable project. And this is the first time that we dictate the project assignment. It's not, it's not we dictate it basically because we assign the project based on the things you mentioned as a preferences. But in the past few semester, we used to give few options to each student and then the student will choose a project out of them after we explain what each project is about. But since this is in, in this semester, we got a large number of students, so we cannot do that. It will be a waste of time and effort, and we may not match a project to each student. So we decided, let's know who you are first, know the things that you know and what you expect to learn. So if you expect to learn about GPU, there's no point to assign you a project or explain a project about FPGA to you. So we decided to do it this way, and let's say how it goes so basically i didn't receive an email uh complaining about the project or the things it's hard or it's not relevant or i'm not going to learn anything from this project and so on but if you have any doubt any problem with the project that we assigned to any of you so it's already been the third weeks hopefully things are going well and i didn't receive any email from mentors as well uh complaining about the student or he doesn't have uh, the, the, the needed skills and so on. So I, I would assume everything's going smooth. And we assign the project and we put you in touch with the mentor in the second week already. So um, I'm going to attend some of these meetings uh, to make sure everything is going well. Uh, but so far, if you have any questions, you can ask any of the mentors, basically. Even uh, you can ask someone who's mentoring another project. If, for example, we have people um, expert in certain uh, platform, you can ask them directly about the help or something, because we used to assign three mentors to each project. And uh, each mentor, basically, for each project, if he sees it's useful to invite more mentors to the project, he would do so automatically. So you shouldn't worry about that, but feel free to discuss anything with any of the mentors, all of them here to help any of you. And this is one of the paper that we assigned to you as a must. So you have to read it or watch the three hour videos. And I recommend everyone to read the paper since in the paper, you can see nice flow over there with the citation references and the full story, you would see it over there with the numbers, with the exact um, story about every application or direction that you may face when you're trying to target a genomic analysis. Uh, this is the things that we ask you to fill for project uh, preferences. So the first page was basic information about you, about the time availability in each week, uh, in each day, and so on. And the second page was more about the skills and the things that you have uh, to provide in this course. And we ask you questions if you have a project and you would like to work on it. We are very open for that, basically. So if you have something in mind to work on it, very specifically related to bioinformatics or a bit not to relate to bioinformatics such, such that you want to do hardware acceleration, for example, or developing a new algorithm to closely related problem. We are always open to these ideas. And based on the things that you um, um, enter in these, in these um, preferences, so we assign you the projects and so on. So again, your responsibility, we already mentioned that attendance is a must. And we have one lecture uh, every week. So this is the second lecture in the next few weeks. So every week we are going to have one lecture. That's a must to attend. So the lecture will be either on Monday or Thursday. So we will have the lecture on both of these days, but you can attend one of them, either Monday or Thursday. And if you want to attend the Monday and you are in mobile genomics, so this is the, the link that you can follow to get the slides and the video and so on. But if you are with accelerating genomics, so there's another uh, course website to follow that with a bit different uh, content or uh, information. And that will be on Thursday, 10 to 11 a.m. So attendance is mandatory, as I mentioned. 
And working your project, we expect that you work in about six hours. That include watching the lecture. So the lecture will be one hour. So you have five to six hours uh, working on your project or doing progress every week. And we think this is reasonable. Since you are going to meet with the mentor, that is another one hour. Then you have about four to five, or let's say six hours uh, to work on your project because not all weeks we have lectures it depends on uh, the weeks and so on but at least we expect around six hours per week and we don't count hours on you but we count tasks so we assign you a task it's up to you if you want to finish it in one hour that's a great and most of the mentors are going to ask you to meet weekly and we do this very often and sometimes we meet bi-weekly it depends on the progress or in the need or the availability of the mentors. But all of these are going to be discussed and negotiated with the mentor. We expect all of you to reply on time to Glip, Moodle, and email messages. And um, that was it for the logistics. However, I'm going to mention about the topics that we're going to cover in the next few weeks, starting from next week, Monday. So we already define intelligent genomic analyses, and hopefully I already motivate you why we need to focus on many other constraints, not only the speed. And in the next few weeks, we are going to teach more about the full pipeline, starting step by step. So we start from sequencing first, to base calling, quality control, read mapping, all the way to variant calling, and many more other topics related to this course. Uh, so um, this is the full pipeline that we are going to cover. And these are the two lectures that we are going to provide every week. And these are the topics that we already covered in the previous semesters. Um, we are going to cover the same topics this semester, but we may add more topics as we improve. So we already have new papers uh, from our research group. We are publishing very frequently. So we may add more new lectures related to these uh, papers that recently published. So we start with introduction to sequencing, then read mapping, and then we include some steps and details of read mapping. And then we talk about intelligent genome analysis, and we talk about um, the um, some more steps in read mapping, such as seed filtering, um, including Genasm. This is the work I mentioned where we leverage a very old paper uh, and we improve it 50 years later. And then we accelerate in hardware acceleration where we got great um, results basically compared to state of the art. We will talk about genome assembly, uh, which is a problem where you don't have the reference genome, how you can uh, locate each read or link these reads to build back your reference genome, for example or your genome. And then we will talk more about uh, genomic privacy, which, which is something different from speed, something different from accelerating genomic analyses. So you have to worry about the privacy of the donor, these DNA uh, samples. So how you enable to do the analysis in Amazon Cloud, for example, while you don't reveal the identity of those uh, donating their DNA or genomic samples. Hopefully by that, we already give you some hints and insights about the things that we are going to cover starting from next week, Monday, as I mentioned at 4 p.m. Zurich time. Uh, every week we are going to um, um, give these lectures very often, uh, weekly, basically. And now I'm going to give you announcement for tomorrow. So this is an optional seminar. Uh, normally in our research group, we have a live seminar where we invite people from industry, from academia to give a lecture on certain topic. And tomorrow we are going to host uh, uh, a fellow researcher from AMD working on a high bandwidth memories. So we um, invite everyone, basically even those on YouTube, not necessarily to be at ETH, to attend the lecture, which will be live streamed on YouTube but you can also use Zoom to join if you are with an ETH domain. And to know more about the speaker and the topic that's going to be presented tomorrow, there's a link here where you can see all the details. And this is the link where you can watch the YouTube live streaming for the talk. So again, this is optional, but we recommend everyone to attend it if you are interested 
and uh, high bandwidth memories or the recent emerging memory technologies. Again, this is the, what we recommend you to read to get more information about uh, the topic. But there are also a large number of papers that we are going to present gradually throughout the course. This is another one. This is a huge survey paper about all existing methods, including 107 read mappers for short and long reads, uh, starting from 1988 uh, until 2020. And we already showed the story how read mapping uh, progressing and how the technology or sequencing technology dictates the developments of this algorithm. And we got very nice feedback from the community over Twitter. And there are a large number of papers that you can see here, uh, either proposing hardware accelerators or software um, uh, um, implementation for different problems. And that is GenStore. Uh, hopefully we'll have one lecture on GenStore from Nika. We have GenPip, which is very recent. This is was presented, I think, uh, 10 days ago on Micro uh, 2022. And uh, it's on uh, the tight integration of different steps of the genomic analysis pipeline. So we were observing that um, doing the analysis in different steps and generating intermediate data, there is a lot of waste for insights and observation that you are not going to capture unless you really capture this intermediate data while you are doing the analysis. So while you are performing the first step, you could do many more without moving to the next step fully. So in the first step, which is base calling, where you try to convert the row sequencing data to useful genomic data, you can observe a lot of nice features about the accuracy of the data, for example. And there might not be a need to base call these data if it has low quality or if it leads to a low quality data. So there are a lot of data conversion happening in the genomic analysis pipeline, going from one step to another. And um, by converting these data, you are wasting a lot of time and resources. And then when you perform the next step, and the third step, the fourth step, the fifth step. And then at the end, you discover that this data that you've been computing and moving from here to there was not useful for the analysis. So you already waste a lot of cycles. And that is the work, uh, what is it? And we recommend everyone to check the paper if you're interested in knowing how we integrate base calling, quality control, and read mapping all together to um, trim and eliminate a lot of the input data coming from the sequencing machine without doing all these steps all the time. And there's CGRAM, which is the first hardware accelerator for um, sequence, uh, sequence to graph alignment problem, which is similar to read mapping, but here we don't have single reference genome, but rather we have a pan genome, a graph representation, which is multiple genomes combined together. And to make the comparison efficient, more efficient here, we don't use the reference genome as one linear sequence, but rather we use it as a graph. So whenever they have common regions together, so we represent it as one branch. But once they have something different between one genome and another genome, then we represent it as multiple nodes in the graph or multiple paths. This is Genasm that I mentioned, where we develop um, the hardware accelerator for the old algorithm. And this is more work on in-memory acceleration uh, for either the full pipeline or uh, for another problem in uh, microbiome profiling or for wavefront algorithm, which is the most recent sequence alignment problem or algorithm. And here we accelerate wavefront on uh, the first real hardware for uh, enabling processing in memory, which is OpMem devices. We have more on pre-alignment filtering. Hopefully I already cover all these topics in the uh, past lecture that I gave um, before two weeks. I also recommend you to watch other lectures on specific topics and um, more papers, more research talks, and so on to cover different aspects. But we are going to cover more uh, during this course on we weekly basis, as I mentioned. 
So that was it for the course logistics. Hopefully that makes the things clear on your responsibilities, on the things that we expect by the end of the semester and so on. So hopefully you enjoy your project, you enjoy the experience with your mentor, and you enjoy the experience that we provide you in this course. Uh, if you have any question or if we have questions on YouTube, I would be happy to take them now. All right. Okay, I'm going to wait a few more seconds. If someone has any question on YouTube or in Zoom. Okay, great. So hopefully I was clear in mentioning all the logistics for the course. As I mentioned, we're going to meet again on next Monday with a new topic, um, teaching, start le teaching lectures on different aspects of the bioinformatics field. All right, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day.